Good morning, NBCC, and welcome to everyone that's joining us from around the world and online, and a special shout out to our San Jose campus. Can you make some noise? Come on, talk to me. All right. I'm thrilled to be here today and sharing with you, but I have to make a statement. Pastor Herman was supposed to be here, and he was supposed to begin his new message series called Back to Basics, but he's not feeling well today. So I'd like for all of us to lift up Pastor Herman in prayer right now. Could you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we just thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, that we can come together as a community, dear Lord, and worship you in spirit and in truth. Today, dear Lord, we lift up our pastor, Pastor Herman, dear Lord. He's not feeling well, dear Lord. So we ask that you would touch his body, that you would touch his heart and his mind, dear Lord, that you would heal him, dear Heavenly Father. That Lord, as he is still in Cushada, dear Lord, we ask that you give him traveling grace back home. Make him all well, dear Lord. And now, dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you would just be with me, that you would sit Jesse down, dear Lord, and that your Holy Spirit would stand in my place. Dear Lord, let the words and everything that I say today be your words, be your thoughts, and let them penetrate the minds and hearts of your people, dear Lord. We give you all the glory and honor. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And we all said amen, amen, amen. Today, I'd like to share with you something. There's a question that I've been asked numerous times over the years. And it's also a question that I've asked myself several times in those years. And it's simple. The question is, how do I develop my relationship with Jesus or with God? Or how do I get closer to God? Let me share our scripture for the day with you. It's from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, starting at verse 22 and 23. And it says, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Every day. We have new mercies from God. And for me, it's like a, a restart or a new beginning. And we all experience new beginnings at different stages in our lives. And at each stage of these new beginnings, it's like starting all over again. For some of us, it's like starting at the end of the line or maybe at the bottom of the class. You see, right now, it's graduation season. So whether you're going from grade school to middle school, from middle school to high school, from high school to college, from college to beginning your first job, maybe it's your first time being away from home. Or for some of us, it's a new beginning becoming a new parent. Or we have an empty nest. All the kids are gone. For some of us, this new beginning is caring for our elderly loved ones in this season of their life. But no matter what new beginning you're in, we all face challenges. I like to use my life as an example of those new beginnings, and I'm going to start just from boyhood to manhood. A lot of challenges, a lot of learning a lot of mentoring, going from being single to getting married, a lot of challenges, a <laughs> lot of challenges, a lot of learning, going from being a husband to a father, same thing, from a father to a grandfather, same thing. All our new beginnings bring on new challenges. And along the way, we learn how to be better at every stage. 
Now, let me talk a little bit about my career. My career at PG&E spanned 34 plus years. And I'm going to tell you about every position that I held in those 34 years. I started off in a position what they call a groundman. Now, groundman is you come in and you are basically a helper. You know absolutely nothing. They're teaching you the tools, the work procedures, the methods. They're teaching you everything you need to know to help the linemen and the foreman do their job. You're a helper. My next position was an apprentice lineman. As an apprentice lineman, I knew a little bit of something, but I didn't know it all. I was being mentored and taught along the way as I was an apprentice lineman. After three and a half years, I became a lineman, a journeyman. Now, at this point, you're supposed to know what you're doing. There is a book of standards that is about maybe this thick. When you're a lineman, you need to know every standard, every procedure, how to build and construct everything that's out there involving the electrical distribution system. My next job was called a troubleman. A troubleman is a first responder. Now, in this new beginning, you have to be sharp. So I had to take everything that I knew from being a ground man, being an apprentice, being a lineman, and I had to apply those skills and that knowledge to respond to emergencies, to outages, to customer requests. Then I became a supervisor. In the supervisor role, another learning curve. Not only was the curve learning, but I was also teaching, mentoring, supervising, caring for each and every one of my employees. And my last job at PG&E, the last 12 years I was there, I was called a senior performance specialist in the safety department. And at that point, I was looking at procedures, looking at work methods, looking at everything that we did, how we could get better and keep our employees safe. Now, every one of those from manhood, boyhood, from my career, I learned to be mentored and I learned to mentor others. At the same time that I was working at PG&E, I served in youth ministry for over 30 plus years. Did them both at the same time. And the same thing happened. When I started in youth ministry, I had to be mentored and I had to learn to serve. Now, even now, <laughs> I'm again in a new, I have a new beginning as the Redwood City campus pastor and it's the same thing again. Learning, mentoring, and being mentored. Now, each new beginning can be a little scary, lonely, confusing, and at times, very daunting. And if I can be honest with you, following Jesus <laughs> is frightening. I'm just keeping it real. But it's the most important new beginning in your life. I'm going to say that again. Following Jesus can be frightening, but it is the most important new beginning in your life. I want to share a little story with you. About 36 years ago, I have a friend, very close friend, who became a preacher. He's a pastor now. His name is Gerald Criswell, and he was a guest speaker at our church one Sunday. And so because we grew up together and he was such a close friend of mine, I came and normally I would sit, oh, in the back of the church, not up front. But because my friend was preaching, I sat in the front row. That particular day changed my life. Let me tell you how. 
my friend Gerald gave a message. Now, to this day, I cannot remember what the title or the scripture of his message was, but he made a statement that stuck with me all these years. And it was this. He said, whatever it is that's between you and God, you need to remove it ASAP. I was like, hmm. He said, now what is it that's standing between you and God that's stopping you from becoming closer? Is it your bad habits? Is it people? Is it your circumstances? Hmm. He said, but whatever it is, you need to remove it ASAP. Now, I grew up in church and I knew God, but I felt that I had to be perfect to really be close to God. Mm. I messed up. Sometimes I felt unworthy. And I was scared to get close to God because you know what? I thought there were some things I had to give up. I was going to lose a part of me. And you know what? I was going to miss out on some of the fun things in life. <laughs> These are just a few examples of some of the things that can keep you from getting closer to God. So I have a question for you. What about your relationship with Jesus? Is there anything between you and God? Do you need a spiritual new beginnings? <laughs> Got some good news for you. God is the maker of new beginnings. Now, if you're online, put that in the chat. God is the maker of new beginnings. In the book of John, chapter three, it says there's a Pharisee named Nicodemus who came to Jesus in the middle of the night to talk to him and ask him questions. Now, pause right there for a second. He didn't come in the middle of the day. Mm -mm. He came to Jesus in the middle of the night. Is anybody looking? Will anybody see me? Some of those same things keep us at a distance from God. So let me read this conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus. Chapter one, excuse me, chapter verse one, it says there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. He said, Rabbi, we know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evident that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can only reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Mm. So what is it when it says being born of water and spirit? You see, we're all born of a woman. And if you know anything about women having babies, the baby is ready to come when the water breaks. So there's your water birth. But what about the spirit? You see, throughout the Old Testament, water is used figuratively as a spiritual cleansing. Mm. For example, in Ezekiel chapter 36, 25, it says this, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities. You see, Nicodemus a teacher of the law would surely be familiar with the concept of physical water representing spiritual purification. But he missed 
the spiritual rebirth that Jesus was speaking of. So I'll ask you a question. What's preventing you from getting closer to God? I mean, do you know who he is? Do you have a real robust relationship with Jesus? Hmm. You might ask the question. OK, pastor, how do I get closer to Jesus? <laughs> I'm going to use a movie to explain this a little bit. There's a movie that I saw years ago. It's called The Edge of Tomorrow, and it stars Tom Cruise. Now, if you, hadn't, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to give the whole movie away because it's a really good movie. But while I watched that movie, it reminded me of what new beginnings really look like. Now, let me tell you and let me explain the movie a little bit. In the movie, the earth falls under attack from this alien nation. And all the armies of the world unite and join forces to try to defeat the aliens. Tom Cruise, he is an officer in the US Army, but he is a media PA officer with absolutely no combat experience. He's sent to the front lines against his will. Mmm, sound familiar? And he's placed in the ranks of the real soldiers. Now, the world armies, they're preparing for a world invasion, a D-Day. But this is what happens. He gets killed as soon as he lands on the beach. Then he wakes up the next day and he's not sure if he's dreaming or not. But he relives the same conversations. He relives the same scenes. And each and every day he lands on the beach and he gets killed. This is repeated several times before he realizes it's not a dream. But each time he learns from the mistakes he makes. And he slowly gets better each time. Hmm, sound familiar? I mean, our work with Christ is sort of like that. We have to get better every time we make a mistake. We keep doing the same sin or the same thing over and over and we keep getting the same results just like he did in the movie. Every day he was waking up. But Tom Cruise in the movie gets hooked up with a female soldier. The actress's name is Emily Blunt, who is the best, the baddest soldier of all the armies. And she helps him to become an awesome fighting soldier. She teaches him. She mentors him. Now, the best part of the movie is when he discovers why his new beginnings happen each day. When he got first killed on the beach, he was splashed with the blood of the alien. And the alien's blood gives him the power to be reborn. Mm, now, I know that sounds a little familiar to you. You see, it's the blood of Jesus who died on the cross for us that allows us to be reborn. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. And when he got up from the grave, it was a new beginning. Mm. And because we believe in him, we are now children of God. And we, you and I, are reborn. In the book of John, chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, it says this. But to all who believe in him and accept him, he gave the right to become the children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth, 
resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. You see, sin, pride, fear, envy, jealousy, all these different things can keep us at a distance from God. It makes us feel defeated, discouraged, tired, lonely, sad, but most of all, scared. You see, just like in the movie, when Tom Hanks had to go where he didn't want to go, he was scared out of his mind. And just like in the movie, the alien, which represents our fears, our hangups, our pride, our lack of humility, seems like it can be invincible. But our God, our almighty God, he's able to give us the strength to overcome whatever the enemy throws at us. Remember that you have victory over everything that comes your way because of Jesus. Every temptation, every fear, every doubt is an opportunity to become stronger, better soldier. Now you can see it as a stumbling block or a stepping stone. There's a song that I like that's by Donnie McClurk and it's called, We All Fall Down. And the lyrics of this song says, we all fall down, we all fall down, but we get up. And at one point it says, for a saint is just a sinner who fell down and then got up. You see, it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned believer, a new believer, or even a seeker. You don't know who this Jesus is. With each new beginning of our, in our lives, Jesus is there to guide us. Each day, we have an opportunity to get a little closer to Jesus, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey. Jesus is right there for us. Now, if you're like me, <laughs> there are times when I feel like, you know, I just messed up too bad. Or if you want a new beginning with Jesus, I say this to you, take him up on this promise. Second Corinthians 5 and 17, one of my favorite scriptures says this. The faithful love, excuse me, it says, therefore, if anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person, the old has gone, the new life has begun. Today is the first day for the rest of your life. It's a new beginning. You see, in the book of Lamentations, it says this, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. Mm. Every day is a new opportunity. It's a new beginning. You see, my buddy Pastor Gerald's sermon, it sparked a hunger in my heart that continues to this day. As I said, I thought I would be missing out on things if I gave up a little bit more of myself to Jesus. But man, was I wrong. It was the total opposite. I could have never imagined in my wildest dreams the life that I now have in Jesus Christ. You see, every day is a blessing for me no matter what life throws at me. And people will say, well, why is that? It's because I have God's peace. I have his comfort. I also have his correction. And most of all, I have his guidance. You see, God's promises are true. And I would ask you to accept them. Take them in. Own them. Storm in your heart. 
You see, God calls us to be faithful, not flawless. I'd like to share with you one of my favorite quotes from a book. One of my favorite books is called The Purpose Driven Life, written by Pastor Rick Warren. And the quote goes like this. Integrity is built by defeating the temptation to be dishonest. Humility grows when we refuse to be prideful. And endurance develops every time we reject the temptation to give up. God has a new beginning for you. He has a new beginning for each of us. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And whatever you do today, get closer to Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you.